Hey folks, Clyde Lindsay here at the Norsdale Lights. I'd like to thank Rob for giving me the opportunity to use his workshop today. We're going to embark on a brand new journey, something that I've never done before, which is attempt to build from start to finish the brand new F16 V3 next generation pixel controller into a new enclosure. Now Rob suggested this case because he'd seen it being used and uh, I wholeheartedly agree. The case is made by MTM Case Guard. You can go to their website and check it out if you want to. Uh, you can find them on Amazon, but I actually went to uh, uh, Rural King. Uh, we're down here in Connellsville, PA right now and uh, they're down the road. So we stopped over there, picked one of these up. It was like 20 bucks and the model number is A are 8C72. So if you're interested in doing a build like this for your controller, I'm going to go through absolutely every single step and I'm going to film all of the process. So, so first on the screen here, as you can see, we have a couple power supplies. I run all five volt pixels and most everybody knows that. So I have uh, four individual five volt pixel power supplies, um, brand new, all never been used. Uh, I had one in storage and then I had three more I had to pull in for just for this project. We have uh, a couple, these are M4 screws that I picked up at the hardware store. I'll be using these to mount this uh, to a drive cage that we're going to build and insert into the enclosure. Uh, I have a couple standoffs, nylon standoffs, they're about uh, one third, uh, a third of an inch thick or you know about maybe a quarter inch thick. And then I have a couple extras for the top side of the board, so I have like a washer to sit on top of them. Um, we have a couple screws that I'm going to use to secure through the standoffs on the board. Screws, nuts and bolts that is. And a, a couple washers for that as well. And this will secure the uh, F-16 and uh, all of uh, the uh, units that I'll have on top of it will go on top of the board, the uh, backer board. The, uh, we have uh, four individual cables for powering our four individual power supplies. And we have uh, a bunch of three core uh, female pigtail connectors from Ray Wu. And uh, these are a little longer. I think they're about uh, a 12 inch long length. And uh, then we have, of course, the uh, F16 V3. And we also have the V2's version of the uh, ex expansion board. The uh, ribbon cable obviously will come in handy as we start doing the build, uh, the final build. But for today, we're just worried about putting all of the components, connecting up the F-16 V2, getting power to everything, and uh, being able to insert all of our pigtails so that we have, at the end of this build, hopefully, a functional pixel controller. So sit back, relax, guys, and I hope you enjoy the video today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the case. And inside here, you're gonna notice that we have a uh, piece of white plastic. Now, uh, the uh, plastic was uh, something that was donated by uh, um, somebody from outside of the community, uh, a member of my family, and uh, they will remain anonymous because they probably shouldn't have done it. So we won't say anything. Um, but anyway, this backer board is nothing more than a, uh, a simple piece of plexiglass you could probably go get yourself if you wanted. Like I said, this is plastic, but you could you can go to the store, get, go to the hardware store, pick up a piece of plexiglass for relatively inexpensive. And uh, uh, the best is plexiglass because it won't shatter if you try to cut or, or uh, drill through it. So uh, I am using plastic. Um, don't ask me the exact contents of this because, as once again, I don't know. Uh, I cut this to fit the inside of the bottom of the case. If you look at the inside of the case, you'll see a couple of standouts here from the molding of the case. And then we have some rails on the bottom. I uh, do not plan on ever drilling into the bottom of the case. Um, I, I, I don't see a need for doing that. Uh, the case has two handles on each side and uh, the clasps are on the outside here. Now, uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to give you a, a visual of exactly how big the uh, case is. Whoops, I bumped the camera. So on the top end here, we're looking at about 16 inches. Outside, bottom is about 14 and a quarter. The inside is obviously much smaller and it's hard to get an accurate reading, even with a tape measure and on camera. It makes me look kind of silly, but we're looking at about 14 and from back to front is about 13 and a half inches if I go from here to here. 
So you're looking at about that size. Now, as you get up higher into the case, if you're doing a dual level build like I am, you're looking at about 14 and three quarters across the front, to, uh, the left to right, and from back to front, you're, I see it as about 14 and an eighth. But it's not important to build to these exact dimensions your backer boards. What's important is, is that they fit in and Luckily, this will only fit in one way. This backer board, the plan for this is going to be to set our power supplies in here. I'll uh, mock it up for you. We will uh, create a drive cage storage for our power supplies. We'll use the M4 screws that I've purchased. Power supplies are all gonna be connected with the individual rails that I'm going to cut out with. Uh, that'll be probably one of the next steps coming up. And then when we're done, when when this is actually, this drive cage is built, we're going to uh, uh, drill out a couple holes in the bottom of the board and we'll mount the dra uh, these uh, rails into the bottom by using zip, zip ties. All of these power supplies, are going to go in the bottom of the case with this rail system that uh, we're gonna cut up into one, uh, four one foot sections. And there'll be a back row and a front row and then one on the bottom on each side as well. This is a four foot length of uh, what what is a uh, one and a quarter inch wide piece of metal. It's about an eighth of an eighth of an inch thickness. And I think I paid 10 bucks for this. So I'm sure that there's probably something a little bit less expensive. Maybe you have metal that you can drill out perfectly the way you want. We're gonna come but, along and measure out uh, what we need to get into the case. Now, uh, how I envisioned each of these power supplies being, they're, they're, the power supplies are, are uh, two inch wide. And I envisioned having an inch gap in between each of the power supplies. Now, I could space that out a little bit better if I wanted to, but the important part is, is that I, I can only use a maximum of 12 inches. And that's the best I can do. And hopefully, if I'm lucky, I'll be able to uh, line up these pre-drilled holes and be able to screw into the uh, locations on the power supplies. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these into 12 inch lengths, and I'm gonna mark those out and make the cuts. We're using a metal cutting uh, bit on our blade on the uh, the uh, sawzall, and here we go. Whoop. Let's get on it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, we, we're gonna test out our power, our power supplies. And the reason why it's important to test your power supplies before you do a build is to make sure, A, number one, they're working. Number two, that they're preset and ready for your build. Now, uh, I've already taken the time. Rob's already gone through these first three. And we have one left that needs to be tested. And we figured, why not give you the option to show you how to test your own brand new power supply. So the first thing you're gonna do whenever you're checking your power supplies, absolute first thing, is you're gonna turn the unit on its side and look for a switch that might be labeled 100, uh, 110 volt or 220. Now this is etched into the metal. You might not be able to pick it up on the camera there. But uh, we're gonna need two things to do the test. And uh, we're gonna use this basic multimeter, probably find one of these at uh, Harbor Freight. Then uh, we're also going to use the, uh, the intended power supply cable that uh, I've already selected. So if you move in here and you look at this physical location, you can see that the slider selector on the power supply is set to 120 volts, or I'm sorry, 220 volts. And if I go ahead and slide it that way, you can see that now it's set for 110. And that makes it a whole lot easier whenever you're down the road trying to test your pixels and can't figure out why you can only run three or four pixels off of one power supply. So make sure this is the first step that you need to do. So next we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take, and I'll show you what we're gonna use here to power our power supplies. These are, these are standard computer 
power supply cables. This plugs into the back of the computer and I picked these up from Amazon or eBay. I think it was eBay. I bought 30 of them. They were like 70 cents a piece. And to be able to take one of these, cut the ends off, and just to be able to utilize this in my controller builds for running a power supply, these are perfect. Uh, one power supply is rated at six amps. So these cables here are rated according to the label at 10 amps, which you might not be able to see. Um, so they'll work out perfectly together for our build. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will find a screwdriver here. And on my power supply here, you'll notice that each individual output is labeled in a different manner. You have the N for neutral, the L for load, that's also your hot wire, and then you have this kind of uh, weird circle with uh, squiggly lines going back and forth that stands for the ground. So we're going to go ahead and throw it together. Now, incidentally, while I'm doing this, uh, there's there's been a trend uh, to take stranded wire. Stranded wire is nothing more than this wire right here that's on the uh, physical cable. And take stranded wire, use a soldering iron, and tin the wire so that the frays do not cross-connect into another opening on whatever you're connecting to. Um, I like to caution against that, though. As I get better and uh, become a little bit more... Uh, knowledgeable. I've learned that it's it's a lot more important to have a solid connection whenever you're connecting to whatever device that the strands actually crush down and give you a far better surface for you to connect to whatever you're connecting to. So it gives you a better connection overall. So I have I have uh, in the past gone ahead and tinned these wires before putting them in, which you can do it. There is no rules or codes that says you can't do that but I prefer to have the absolute best connection to my boards or any electrical connection to remove any points of failure I'd rather have not set the power supplies or anything with uh, tin, uh, tin ends. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in and we see by the uh, LED here that we actually have some power. So with this multimeter, this is a this is a great little uh, start out ho uh, hobbyist multimeter. This is perfect for our uh, for our uh, uses in in RGB lighting and so forth. So I'm going to turn this to the on position, and you see where this 20 is right here on the DCV side. So your power supply, your um, multimeter may not be the same as this meter is, but just look for the DCV. V setting, turn to that area and go to the 20. That'll set your decimal places the, to the correct location. So what we're testing now is we're testing to see the, um, the level at which the power supply is outputting voltage. Now we know these are five, um, five volt outputs, but what, the other thing we need to know is where do we test? So we have our voltage plus, we have three outputs of voltage plus, we have three outputs of voltage negative. And when we're working with DC voltage, you have two different uh, you have two different testers. You have a red and you have a black. When you're talking about DC voltage, the red is always going to be your hot wire. The black is always going to be your uh, neutral or your ground. Your ground. So to test, all we're going to do is we're going to take the red, place it against the voltage plus, and then we're going to take the black and push it against the neutral. So as we can see, we can see we have uh, 5.21, which is listed as uh, slightly over what the power supply needs to be. So how do we fix that? In well, order to adjust the power supply, it's going to be hard for you to see, but I'll point it out here on this other board. There's this little miniature screw that is on the very bottom by the LED, and you use that as your set screw to make your fine adjustments to the power supply to the setting that you need that to be at. So while you might not be able to see it, I'll do the best I can. Hold these in place 
and I'll make my adjustment. Now righty tighty, lefty loosey. Whoop. If you turn it to the right, you're gonna turn it up. If you turn it to the left counterclockwise, you're gonna turn it down. So I'm slowly turning it down and I'm looking for exactly 5.00 and we have achieved that. So don't build your controller without remembering to go ahead and test it. All right, so the next step after we've got our, our power supply set up, I wanted to show you this is kind of what it's gonna look like with the rails so on. What we're gonna do is we're going to connect just the uh, supply lines to the controllers via this cable that Rob has graciously donated to the project. This is uh, black and red wire. It's a 12 gauge wire. Really, really nice uh, cable strippers. And uh, if you don't have these, get them. They're awesome. Put them in there, just squeeze and bam, you're done. As we said, in DC voltage land, we'd use red for our hot or positive and neutral or ground is our black. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll make the attachment. Basically, that's what we'll have. And uh, probably need just that much cable, which is probably more than enough. Cut it off and then we'll go ahead and do the second one. Let's start building our quote-unquote drive cage. Now, all right, so the next step is putting the screws on to the rails to create a good solid foundation so these don't fall over uh, while we're picking up and moving it. But um, I picked up my M4 screws, and uh, these are Rob's. These are the ones I got at my local hardware store. And upon looking at the individual power supply, and uh, I'll show you this real quick, we, uh, we deduced that we had to have a specifically shorter screw than what I was actually using. And the reason for that is because inside the internal electronics, the board and so forth, are, those electronics are located near the edge of the board, but if you use this screw and you tighten it down, it might be too long and might interfere with one of the components that's actually inside of the power supply. So, after looking, we found on the bottom, what I consider the bottom, which is this side right here, this is too long to put into there and Rob has graciously offered to uh, let me use a couple of his shorter screws to finish that side of the build. We're also going to be using a couple washers for the top. Obviously these holes are pretty big. With that, I'm just going to grab a couple uh, washers. We're going to take the screwdriver and we're going to begin connecting everything all up. All right, so we've got our cage half done, and we've uh, reconsidered how we're going to attach the cage to the backer board. Initially, I was going to drill some pilot holes and run a couple zip ties and just zip tie the back and the front through the rails that are in between here, but uh, we came up with a little better idea. We're going to use uh, a couple of these uh, number eight half-inch size uh, screws. I'm going to put a washer on them and we're going to run those into in between here using a, a long tipped uh, uh, Phillips drill bit and we're just going to screw it right down onto the backer board. This won't, because of the height of the board from the screws that we attach to the rails, it's raised it up so it's not going to drill down into and through the board. And this will be pretty secure to hold the entire setup in place. So I guess I could turn it this way a little bit. All right, so we finally managed to get everything all attached to the backer board. All that's left is just lifting this up. Oops and placing it right into the enclosure, which you can see there's plenty of room down here to make any wired connections that we need to make. Um, and pretty much the rest of the build is now gonna focus on getting the F16 V2 set up on its backer board.